everyone, it's Reagan, and welcome to the start of another work week reading vlog. I was about to say it's Monday, but it's not actually Monday. It is actually Tuesday. It was a long weekend over the weekend, um, and I had a really nice relaxing couple of days, but now I'm back at work, and I wanted to do a reading vlog for you guys. I'm in the midst of one book that I am so unbelievably in love with. So I'm excited to show that off and read the rest of it over the next couple of days. As well as I plan on starting a book that I have been highly anticipating and I know a lot of you guys love it or are really interested in it. So I'm excited to feature it and chat about it. But this is going to be a work week reading vlog for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and a little bit of Friday. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's dive into the video. Let's talk about the books shall we so i don't know why there's scissors here the first book i'm going to be reading this is they're so far apart is uh the ship of magic by robin hobb i have been reading this throughout the month and i'm about 600 pages of the way through so i have a, like 200 and some change of this left i love this book so much i it has captured me in ways i was not anticipating i am absolutely just enthralled by this story and these characters and everything that is going on within this world and i will talk more in depth about this after work today but i am loving this i have been reading it kind of slowly i've been reading kind of slowly this month altogether. i have only read one book and then this um and it's the seventh or the eighth of the month so i'm definitely hoping to finish this and then obviously jump right into jade city by fonda lee which i'm really excited about this is sort of like a mob fantasy sort of story which i've heard really good things about i also hear this has great romance kind of gray morality and all of that shenanigans which i love so these are the two books i hope to read this weekend all right i'm back with the third time i'm gonna try to explain ship of magic by robin hobb you guys wouldn't know but this is well now you know my third my third attempt um, and it's not because this book is bad. In fact, this truly so far might be one of my favorite fantasy books I have ever read, especially first book in the series. It's really that this book is very expansive. You have lots of characters um, and lots of different POVs, but don't be intimidated by that. It's actually a seamless reading experience. You read from one to the next and everything flows and makes so much sense and you're just rooted in the story. In general, going into this book, I knew it was about ships. I knew it was about trading and piracy. I don't know why, because it's Robin Hobb, but I thought because of that, this is probably gonna be a jolly, ho, 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 good time. No, this book is harrowing <laughs> and devastating at times. And it's definitely not a happy book. You're either reading from perspectives of people that you hate or are around people you hate, or you're reading characters who are just like dealt a hand of fate and they're trying to do the best they can with it um not without flaws themselves and i kind of have to dance around people that you also hate but also like there's just so much humanity within this story and there's so much like trying within this story it's just people like trying to persevere the best they can and it is just so far incredible but can be hard to read um, as I said, so many perspectives. There are kind of primary perspectives and then there's sometimes you get chapters from characters that are kind of included in the scene to provide additional background and kind of flesh out the story a bit more. Um, and it's just so artfully done and crafted. It's just so interesting to contrast the Farseer trilogy, which is just fits, to now having a whole cast of characters. Um, for the most part, I would say our primary sets of perspectives all centered around one single trader merchant family. These perspectives are kind of grouped, I would say, into three primary stories. Um, and as I said, you kind of follow perspectives from all sorts of different types of people. Some you love, some you hate, but even the people that you really enjoy and care for, they have their own flaws and those are definitely present, but I think that's what keeps everyone kind of rooted in humanity. To try to be as quick as possible, this family, there's kind of a catalyst event that kind of organized everyone in such a way. And that is the death of the father of this family, who was kind of the primary trader. And when he was gone doing his merchant thing, his wife, Rancia, would stay home and kind of manage the family estate in the farms. However, with his passing, everything kind of changed because the ownership of the property transitioned from Rancia and her husband to her eldest daughter and her husband. 
her husband's belief is that the man should control everything, blah, 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 and he kind of rules everything with an iron fist. He's absolutely terrible. So he then now leaves the house and you know takes over trading in the merchant ship. Um, and he travels with his son, which is kind of like one primary perspective. His son just wants to be a priest, but his father is forcing him to be a sailor. And that is kind of that story. It's heartbreaking. And Wintro, as the son you just cried for and you root for, um, but it's hard to read. With Kyle, the husband, taking over, kind of leaves one of the other sisters, Althea, kind of uh, left to sort of figure some things out because she always dreamed that she would actually take over the ship and become a sailor. She views herself as a very capable sailor. And while she definitely knows a lot, she's also kind of the spoiled, pampered, pampered daughter of a well-known merchant in the city. So she decides to leave her family and kind of set out on her, on her own. And her story kind of intersects with a first mate from her father's ship who was let go by Kyle. Um, and their story kind of goes from there. She kind of tries to make her own way uh, in the virgin world and then we also follow Rancia who now is trying to figure out how to take some of the reins back from her family back from Kyle. We also follow Kefria who is the oldest daughter married to Kyle who's kind of beginning to realize her place within the marriage and in with her family and you kind of see her sort of grow into her own power in the most fascinating of ways. So that is like a quick summary of the whole family but there's so many things kind of happening interwoven um, and then on a separate set of story we also follow a pirate who wants to become a pirate king. He is ruthless in this pursuit. He is not a good person but he sort of takes a route of being like the great emancipator to get what he wants but he's not doing it from any moral perspective. And among all these intimate chapters following all these different people trying their best to make do with the cards they were dealt, oftentimes it's hard to read, but I truly fall in love with a lot of the different characters in the stories. There's also just this overall feeling of change in the air and change not in necessarily a good way. There's two, I would say, like primary things that are going on and that the trade is changing and there's kind of influence coming from this faraway kingdom, which socially and culturally is impacting in a few huge ways. One is women no longer are supposed to or be expected to hold any place in society of power. They're basically supposed to be kind of kept um, by their husbands, which culturally really impacts a lot of the women in this women in this book, especially in regards to Kyle, because he really subscribes to that cultural point of view. And then two, with the spreading of the culture too, is coming something else. And that is a slave trade of basically taking people who are in debt and forcing them into service and into labor. And this is a large part of the book and that some characters are looking to gain profit from this, some characters are looking to emancipate individuals in this for their own profit and gain, but the majority of the characters are working around this and are morally very much against it. Everyone is kind of impacted by it and no one can necessarily run from the moral degradation that is in, that is included and involved in a trade such as this. And then there kind of includes the third point of view, which are these serpents kind of following everything along. I'm not totally sure how they fully sync up into the narrative yet, but there's kind of this like microscopic and then macro view of everything that's going on through all these different POVs. And so far it's like so masterfully done. It is a not an easy book to read emotionally, but it's beautifully written, amazing characters so far. I'm really, really liking it. There's also elements of magic I feel like are important to point out, uh, mostly with the charming of things. I mentioned this trader family, they have something that is called a live ship, which is a ship that is literally alive uh, with magic. And this makes it a very impressive vessel. And part of the reason why Kyle was very excited to marry into this family. And Kyle is basically trying to turn this ship into something bad. <laughs> um, but you see this ship, and you read from the ship's perspective and you also see it kind of bond with Wintro and Athlea and all of these things and it's just so excellent. So ends the longest explanation of a book of all time and I'm not even sure how clear I was. Point is though, I've read 600 pages of this. I love it. It is a deep, deep exploration of humanity and humans interacting in this fantasy world and I am just in awe of it. Um, and I'm gonna read more tonight. <laughs> Hi friends, I'm done with work and I have already changed into my matching fall PJ set. Um, I'm actually gonna sit down and read for a little while because I'm really into my book as I hopefully articulated in my super long last clip where I tried to describe it. 
Um, some wild things are happening, no spoilers, but let's just say this is a book that will... It's riveting because so many things are happening at once, and you have to follow these characters that you hate. One of them is this pirate king who's like trying to... Well, one is a pirate. He's trying to become a pirate king, and he's using like magic, and he's using like ways... Like he, he does like good things to achieve bad ends, which is a really confusing, convoluted scenario to be in. And then obviously other characters as well. Um, what am I saying, saying though? I'm gonna read is the point. And the other thing is I really need to go to the grocery store, but cannot be bothered in the least. So I scoured my um, pantry and I'm gonna make spam for dinner tonight because it's delicious. And tomorrow night we'll just see what I, you know, figure out maybe pancakes. <laughs> just can't be bothered to go to the store. But anyway, I'm gonna go sit on the couch with Clay and read my book. So, toodaloo. Um, I've been reading uh, Millie is Barking at Nothing. Um, and I've read another 50 pages. So, just quick reminder I was on page 600. There's 600, no, there's not 886 pages, I believe. So, I have about just under 300 pages to read in the next couple of days. Um, I've read another 50 pages. I love this book so much um, and to try to articulate what I feel like I haven't been able to articulate so much is this book is burdened almost with emotions like it is like full of despair and heartbreak and desire and hope that is often not necessarily achieved I feel like there are so many scenarios that you can kind of encounter in this fantasy novel that you see in other books, you see characters attempt to do these things in other books, and usually it's more romanticized in their approach, like a girl pretending to be a boy sailor and shows everyone wrong and she's amazing. Like that happens in this book, but it doesn't necessarily go that way. You know, a boy tries to defy his father, run away, and he's confronted by the um, sorrows and the horrors of this world and he is able to learn from that run back and change everyone around him it doesn't go that way like there's just so many things <laughs> needless to say robin hobb is not easy on her characters it is a hard world to live in robin hobb's world but also like you just have to just respect what she does with her stories because due to all these trials and tribulations it's a really fascinating story and the thing is it's like not so much is happening but yet so much is happening like there's all these individual desires and goals and some of them are big and some of them are small and you kind of watch them unfurl and you get this feeling that there's going to be this intersection of wills um, through time. Um, there's obviously two more books in this series. I don't know how it's going to happen yet, but that's kind of the epicness of it all, I guess. But all I do know is like, I care deeply for everyone, but, but that feeling, that deepness of emotion is different for everyone <laughs> like some characters I have deep rage towards some characters I have a lot of unease and suspicion for some characters I want to slap some characters I want to hug some characters I want to shake and also give a hug it's confusing but it's great but yes this book is about ships and trading and piracy and all of that but it's also really about people doing some of them really screwed up things I just don't know how it's all gonna work out. But all I know is Wintro, I would die for him. Athlea, I wanna shake her, but also I want her to like get her dream. Rancia, I'm obsessed with. Malta, I'm like, why? Like there's just so many people. Anyway, I'm rambling. I'm going to make dinner now. I'm gonna put Dragon Ball Z on with Clay and make some spam, decompress from this book for a bit. I really also just wanna say like, please read this, it's amazing. It's hard, but it's amazing. It's amazing. Anyway, time to cook. It's time. Let's fry this bad boy up. I got the rice on. Spam is my childhood. It will forever be one of my favorite foods of all time. No competition. Delicious, delicious, delicious. Piccolo, Gohan, and Dende, my faves. It's ice cream time, folks. And I have two different types of rainbow sprinkles to pick from. Jimmy's and then the small rainbows. Big, big, it's gonna be a game time decision. It's a big choice. And here we are. 
the Jimmies are on. The Jimmy Jams. One more episode of Dragon Ball Z, and then it's back to reading. All right, Matilda's over there snuggled up. I'm gonna be doing my reading. I'm gonna try to read like 100 more pages tonight, because um, my goal is to finish this book by tomorrow so I can start Jade City. But I'm going to get some reading and try not to cry <laughs> all night long. Good morning from Matilda. She is here, and she is napping. But also, hi, happy Wednesday. I am wearing overalls because it's hot outside, but a sweater because it's fall in my heart. And uh, yeah, I've just been in meetings this morning. I stayed up late reading and I will keep you guys posted with my progress a little later in the day. But I'm gonna get another cup of coffee and get back to it. Aftermath of a bookstagram, Matilda is still here. And I treated myself to a smoothie today, which was quite delicious. That's pretty much it. That's everything that's happened so far, except the work part, which was, you know, the biggest part of my day. But you know, such is life. Hi world, I have finished working. Matilda and I are just enjoying some couch time. Not that I don't spend my entire days on the couch anyway. Uh, I wanted to pop in and let you know how much I was able to read last night. I was actually able to pass the 750 page mark, which means I have about 116 pages left which I'm definitely planning on trying to finish tonight. This book honestly has gripped me from page one. I've like fallen into this narrative and I feel like the first book, which makes sense given it's the first book of a trilogy, truly feels like just the start and kind of watching everything kind of unfurl slowly. It just creates scenarios of such payoff. Um, I definitely feel like in some aspects I would just scribe it in compared to Game of Thrones, not in any aspect of the plot and the writing is very different too. And I actually find that Robin Hobb's characters feel much more complete and robust than I find when I read George R. R. Martin's writing. I describe it in compared to Game of Thrones and it's vast multi-perspective aspects and kind of how characters have these sort of journeys together like there's so many characters and some of them are kind of paired up and you see all these disparate storylines but you kind of have the feeling that things will come together but you just don't quite know how and because of that i just feel so entranced by everything and i also just feel so much for everyone I i'm running like the full gamut of emotion like i feel like every emotion i could possibly feel robin hobb has made me feel it from pity to disgust to hatred to love to frustration to even moments of like joy like small moments of joy to like weariness to everything i feel like she's made me feel so true testament to this writer here um that being said i'm gonna chill on the couch i think i'm gonna eat some cheetos i'm not gonna lie have a little bit of a snack for dinner i think we're gonna do breakfast for dinner we have pancakes which i think i mentioned yesterday but we also have like eggs i even think bacon so we might do like the whole thing the whole nine yards but in the meantime i'm gonna try to watch some tv i don't really know what i feel like watching maybe gilmore girls or maybe i'll find some new like feel good reality tv to put on in the background munch on some cheetos enjoy my evening that's the plan everyone so uh yeah i'll check in in a bit when i start cooking and also keep you guys posted on my reading progress which yeah robin hobb <laughs> she'll do it to you she's done it to me anyway i'm gonna start this uh home organization show on netflix try to get some inspiration for my life hence that you know pile of stuff over there i need to deal with and then cheetos relaxation it is pancake o clock i think it's actually time to flip this pancake o clock actually i don't know let's see it doesn't look fluffy enough oh no it's not quite ready yet almost there though it's exciting stuff Ooh, this pancake stack out of control also you hear gilmore girls in the background we have one pancake to cook and it's dinner time Watching some Dragon Ball Z, I have my flickering pumpkin, which I've bought four more of these from Target just to put all over my apartment because I love this guy so much. But, sorry, we have bought four more because we love them so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now we're watching Dragon Ball Z. Frieza is in his final form. Will Goku be able to survive? Find, Find out, out next, next time, time on, on Dragon, Dragon Ball, Ball Z. Z. But anyway, that's what we're watching. Now we are about to watch a bit of Succession. Almost done with season two. And then I'm going to get to reading and finish The Ship of Magic. Let me flip you around. Bitch, I'm almost finished tonight. 
I've actually had a lot of comments asking me to review, side note, to review my weighted blanket and I can say definitively now I've had it since my birthday in July. It's the best. I think this is just a twin size one and my friend got it from Amazon, I wanna say. She sent it to me and the cover's from Target. It's been a lovely thing. I love reading underneath it. I love sleeping underneath it. I love, I love it. I carry it around everywhere. It's my workout. So 10 out of 10 would recommend a weighted blanket 100%. Um, but yeah, in terms of TV, we're currently watching Succession, which is a wild show on HBO full of terrible people, rich people, doing like corporate things. I, it's not a great way to describe it, but it's like a very intense family empire type of show. Um, and it's really good, but it's very intense. And we're almost done with the second season, so we're almost all entirely caught up. And then obviously, as you know, we're watching Dragon Ball Z. We are on episode 46 of that, so making good progress. We're watching Dragon Ball Z Kai as it's much faster. It's like a consolidated watch. And I think there's 170 episodes, so you know, we're making we're making some good time. We're about a fourth of the way through-ish. But yeah, that is our watching. That's where we're at with the watching of the world. And because we're almost in a succession, we'll need to pick a new show soon. So we'll keep you posted on what we end up watching next. But our next anime is going to be Bleach, which I'm really jazzed about. And then maybe a shoujo anime because I'm trying to get Clay prepped to be able to watch Gintama, which I cannot wait. But anyway, this is a ramble. We're gonna watch this and then I will get back to reading and keep you guys posted on that. It's late, but I'm now going to read. I'm going to finish this book. I have less than 100 pages left. It's gonna happen. And I will give you guys a briefing of it tomorrow and I'm gonna be starting Jade War, which is very exciting. Woo! I can't believe I'm about to finish The Ship of Magic. I feel like I've been reading that book for a lifetime in a good way, but I, I do feel like I've been with it for so long. But anyway, I'm gonna get to reading. Hello, good morning. I'm wearing jeans today, which I just feel like I should document. A little t shirt and this cardigan, which I wear as often as I can, which is from Madewell. Um, I got it last year, I wanna say. It is pouring down rain today, and it's supposed to rain all day, which is very exciting, actually. I love a rainy day any time of year, but especially when I'm not leaving my apartment. It's just a nice, cozy ambiance. I'm gonna turn my flickering pumpkin on and enjoy that and work. <laughs> um, I did finish Ship of Magic last night, hence why I sound so tired, because I stayed up late reading it. Um, I'll give you guys a more comprehensive overview and my thoughts but I'll be starting Jade City this evening. And Clay just got back because I'll show you because he picked up breakfast tacos and coffee for us this morning. A little Thursday morning treat. Mm -hmm. Also very exciting. Isn't that right, Clay? Isn't that right, Clay? Isn't that right, Matilda? <laughs> I ordered some frozen soup for a delivery earlier this week to have for lunch over the next couple days, you know, to keep us from ordering out. But I think it got lost in the mail. No biggie. But that could only mean one thing. I'm about to run out and buy some sushi from, uh, we have a Japanese mart right next to our apartment. It is heaven on earth. So I'm gonna go buy some sushi there. They have like really good pre-made stuff, like pre-made food. And it's much more reasonable than getting it from a restaurant. So I figured, hey, I try to be responsible, but the forces that be, fate didn't let it happen. So sushi it is. BRB. I got lots of sushi for myself because I'm very hungry, but I also treated myself to one of these frozen wafer ice cream sandwiches. These are so good. I'm gonna eat this maybe tonight or tomorrow. I'm gonna throw it in the freezer. But if you ever have the chance to get one of these, get them. They're genius. It's like a waffle ice cream chocolate sandwich. It's absolutely fantastic. But anyway, I'm gonna eat lunch now. All right, I just finished work. You can see all of my flickering pumpkins around the apartment. Best purchase I've ever made. Each one's like $10. I'll link them down below. But now I'm gonna give you guys an overview. Let me flip you around. Going to give you an overview now of my thoughts on Ship of Magic, and then I'm gonna sit for the next like 45 minutes and start the City of Jade. Is that what it's called? Kingdom of Jade? City of Jade. Jade Wars. I've been reading too much fantasy lately. Anyway, so I'm gonna start that tonight. Football starts tonight which feels very bizarre and unusual. I feel like this should not be a season for football, but 
it is starting i will watch obviously i do really enjoy watching football with clay um so i'll put that on i have uh we even drafted a fantasy this year i don't know everything about this year feels bizarre and i don't understand why anything is even trying to start because i feel like everything's just gonna get canceled but we'll see i'll have it on in the background and i probably will read through it clay actually just delivered me as i was filming this clip a latte which i'm going to enjoy i love you a latte um i'm gonna enjoy it whilst i start reading um jade wars jade is that it Jeez, I just can't remember. But anyway, let's talk Ship of Magic, which is kind of hard to talk. I feel like I've been incoherent about this book this entire vlog, but truly this is one of the most excellent books I have ever read. I would definitely recommend reading the Farseer trilogy first. I don't think you technically have to. Actually, I know you technically don't have to. Um, this could be a starting point for the rest of the series, and then you can go backwards and read the Farseer trilogy or vice versa. But there are some like Easter eggs in this that I find very satisfying and definitely worth reading the Farseer trilogy first. But man, Robin Hobb's characters and her writing and just like her ability to weave all these different perspectives together in such a compelling and captivating way center around trading and ships but it's so much more than that and there's just mystery and intrigue and just to see where the rest of these stories are going to go from here i cannot wait i also am just excited to read the other trilogies in this world as well because ugh, i just there's so many books to discover and i can't wait i have so many left and i've just loved this book so much it's just such a great feeling so five out of five stars i really will say this is one of the best books i have read in a long time not a long time but like one of the best books i've ever read um so there's that hopefully that sold you on robin hobb because i feel like i just want more people to read robin hobb and i really want to preface this to say the assassin's apprentice which is the first book to the farseer trilogy is okay it's like a three-star book it's a little boring it's a little dry the writing style is not like fully gripping. And then you read the next book, The Assassin's, uh, The Royal Assassin, which the plot has a lot more pace to it. Fitz becomes a little more interesting and dynamic. But for me, it's truly the third book to the Farseer trilogy where Robin Hobb like finds it. She has these captivating, dimensional, intriguing human characters that you're reading from. And then all of that continues on into The Ship of Magic where instead of just having one character that you bleed for, you have so many characters that you bleed for there's a lot of characters in farseer that you love too um and just her writing has gotten better and better and everything about it is amazing i'm rambling but anyway loved this five out of five stars i've also read goodness 286 pages so far over the past two days which i think is really good but i'm now going to start um jade wars what is that book called jade city it is called jade city oh my gosh this is so embarrassing Anyway, I'm going to start that now and read before football starts and then I'm going to make some dinner. I think I'm going to make like pasta, some ravioli in the fridge. I have food now, so that's exciting. Um, I'm rambling. Anyway, goodbye. Time for me to start reading. I took the hard uh, dust jacket off this book to read and it has such a stoic <laughs> um, like hardcover. I mean, look at this. It just says Jade city like small embossed that's it it's like austere i love it all right time to read hi everyone so i've been sitting here i've read 60 pages of jade city so far and this book starts out quick and it is so interesting and it is it's so far it's exactly what i was hoping it would be vibe wise so going in i heard people kind of describe this as like godfather meets fantasy and i feel like that comparison is right on. I would describe this as what I think to be a Chinese inspired urban fantasy story. The setting is wild and I'll get more into that in a minute but it is a um, urban fantasy story all about crime families in this one city and the crime is centered around the the crime and the power centered around the ownership of jade so jade in this fantasy world for some individuals based off of blood heritage um can kind of harness the power of jade and you become to what i can gather like more powerful and i think it can manifest itself in different ways but jade is like hard to harness it's hard to find hard to harness and it makes you powerful so the crime families use jade to kind of maintain control and power i think there was some sort of like nationalistic war back in the day turned into these different 
after the war was complete they turned into like different families who kind of control different areas of the city and used jade to maintain that power the book opens and i think some of this power is beginning to shift we follow so far two perspectives brothers someone called the pillar and the horn the pillar is like the lead of this uh family and then the horn is his younger brother and is like the enforcer kind of guy um they're both very young and they basically are taking over for the grandfather who is sick and with his um and essentially this book is on the precipice of a changing guard like basically the people who have been in control for a long time after this and they all knew each other in the war are either passed away or are dying so new individuals are taking power which is kind of shaking up the structure of this whole city which basically what i'm inferring is like turf wars are about to happen and i also think there's like a new foreign body also getting involved in the jade trade and also being able to like make the utilization of jade more accessible um as i said so far it is really fast moving and it is exactly like a sort of like mob-esque vibe that you'd be looking for when you hear like crime families it's like you know there's people who have to pay to have protection people are getting like beat up in restaurants and bathrooms and all sorts of things are going on lots of family drama lots of people in the organization who have opinions but you have to like save face because everything's kind of ruled by violence the vibe is there, the vibe is great. So far we mostly follow Lan and Hilo, um, which as I mentioned are the brothers, but I think we're gonna be following more people, at least I would guess. Um, I hear there's really great romance in this, but yeah, I've read 60 pages, it's gripped me right away. The story, the plot, the vibe of it is perfect, and this needs to be a television show. I can already tell reading it, HBO needs this. It would be so fun to watch, but I'm excited. I feel like this is going to be a really fast read and it is a very different kind of vibe than Ship of Magic. I don't know how to describe it, but like sometimes reading about bad people can be really fun and then sometimes reading about bad people can be really depressing and like Ship of Magic, depressing. Jade City, I think it's going to be fun. <laughs> um, but anyway, I am going to actually start dinner now, put some football on it's about to start cook some ravioli, hang out with Clay for a bit, but I'm definitely gonna be doing more reading tonight. I wanna read over 100 pages for sure if I can, which I think will be easy um, as this book reads really fast. But I wanted to give you some initial thoughts and updates for Jade City. It's here, it's happening, and I love it. Blood feuds, family drama. Ooh, I hope there's a romance between two different families. Oh, the angst of that. Anyway, okay, I'm gonna go make dinner now. All right, making some dinner. I'm gonna roast some tomatoes and some bell pepper and this garlic, and then I'm gonna make a quick sauce with some ravioli. Quick and easy. Football feels really weird, I'm not gonna lie. I love Patrick Mahomes though, so I'm trying to enjoy the probably the first and only week of football before it's canceled. <laughs> Roasting these veggie boys. I'm gonna go sit on the couch for a while, and then I will make the sauce. Boiling some water. It's easy. We love an easy dinner. All right, step two, chop up all your roasted stuff, the garlic, save your butter, because you'll need it. And then I'm gonna start constructing the sauce, which is just melting all this crap together with some cheese and some sour cream and some cream cheese. Should be good. After you make the sauce, you add in the bell pepper, mix it rub, then I'm gonna add in the ravioli, add some lemon, top with, I don't know why I'm talking like this, top with Parmesan cheese, and she's done. It's gonna be good and it's done. I've retreated to read. I grew tired of football. I also brought one of my flickering pumpkins with me for ambiance in Matilda, of course. I pulled her from her den of blankets to, you know, bribe her with a new den of blankets. But yeah, I'm going to read more of this. I'll keep you guys posted, but so far, so amazing. I'm still not over how cool this hardback is. I don't know, it just kind of, it caught me off guard in all the best ways possible. Uh, but anyway, time to read. Hello, good morning, happy Friday. I was eating Cheetos for breakfast. Couldn't be happier. Um, it's been a good morning so far. I stayed up late reading uh, Jade City, which I will talk to you guys about in a bit. But right now, Clay and I are actually gonna go on a walk and buy a bagel. Bagel Friday, you know? You gotta celebrate the small things. And Bagel Friday is one of my favorite days of the week. There's Clay, ready to go. Ready to go. Can't hear anything I'm saying. Anyway, all right, good morning, happy Friday. Bought a bag, I was gonna say a baguette, a bouquet, 
and got the bagels. So I'm gonna wa I'm gonna eat this now and get back to the office. It was nice to have a little walk midday. I feel like I never leave my place during work hours. So that was quite nice, Clay. Very nice. <laughs> Hi everyone, I have a second to chat through a bit of a reading update for Jade City, which I have read 150 pages um, through last night. And I have to say, I'm flying through this book so quickly. It is everything I was hoping it would be from like a crime fantasy perspective. It's just such a good setting, the ambiance, the family drama, the inside family drama, and then the outside family drama, the expectations, the maneuvering. Like if you think court politics are intense, it's kind of like that, but then like even more so because <laughs> anything can be used to start a war between these two families. Um, and the other nice thing I like about this story too is you're jumping through all these different perspectives of different individuals um, at different power levels within the family. Um, which I like too. It's interesting going in, I kind of knew some people's favorite characters. I feel like everyone loves Hilo, which I can definitely understand why. He's really funny, but for me, he's like a little too chaotic. Like in that, I really enjoy his perspective, but I would say probably my favorite character is Andy, which to me is not surprising. He's like this young kid who's just like stuck in the middle of all this stuff. And he's like, gosh darn it. Why did this have to happen to me? Um, and he's my favorite. I like Lon a lot too. I don't know, all the perspectives are always really interesting. It's just like the family political dynamics are fascinating and moves so quickly. And it really has this cool element of urban fantasy um, in that it has like moments of technology and like current political climate, but it's not our world at all though. It's like this true mixing of like the fantastical and like current life which is so cool like there's televisions and cars and suvs and western civilizations trying to you know clout their political power abroad but there's also people who have magical power through jade and there's like this drug that's being peddled and like all sorts of stuff and it's just so 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 interesting so yeah i've read 150 pages definitely living up to the hype so far so fascinating it's a great time Great contrast to the Ship of Magic, as I feel like I keep saying, because they're bad people, but you kind of like them. Actually, you really like them, a lot of them anyway, versus Ship of Magic, the bad people you don't like at all. But anyway, I do have to get back to work now. I just wanted to pop in and do a bit of an update because I have around 150 pages. I'm going to try to read a little bit more this afternoon um, before I end this vlog, so I'll keep you guys posted as I continue to read, but just wanted to say, hey, Hi everyone, it's after work, Clay's here. It's Clay's birthday tomorrow, so that's why I'm actually ending the vlog today because we're just gonna hang out for his birthday. Watch Dragon Ball Z, that's the plan. But I wanted to pop in here and end the vlog. I was actually able to read another sneaky 50 pages of Jade City today, which I will focus on and talk about first. That means I was able to read over 200 pages of Jade City and I have to say, I am really enjoying this book. I feel like the pacing is great. All the different perspectives are incredible and kind of like, it kind of has like mystery elements thrown in there because there's a lot of like backdoor dealing and behind the scenes stuff that people are trying to figure out. You also just gain a lot of empathy and sympathy for these characters even though they're literally a mob family. Um, and I also feel like because everyone is within the family, there's some, there's just drama that is inherent that you just don't get in like other types of situations. Um, because you can't just like kick out your brother, you know, because he's your brother. And then there's also like political consequences too. But yeah, I'm really liking it. I feel like it's scaling well. And I feel like it's going to be an explosive novel. I also am really curious to see kind of how all these threads, both the competing family, this sort of foreign influence that's like trying to pepper its way in um, through the selling of this drug and the wanting of the possession of Jade. It's just so interesting. And I really stand by that this would be an excellent television show like HBO. Somebody needs to take this on because I think it'd be good and it'd be like sexy, you know? Like if you read this book, it kind of has that sort of vibe. There's like, it's just got a good ambiance to it that fits its style. There's like urban fantasy mob crime family in this sort of like urban fantasy setting. I'm down for it. So anyway, I read to page 200. I'm liking it a lot. I hope I'll be finishing it pretty quickly. 
Um, so that was that. And then obviously I read the last 286 pages of Ship of Magic, which I've gone on and on and on and on about five out of five stars to this. I loved it so much and I can't wait to read the next book in the series and to read more books by Robin Hobb. Um, truly, she's just a remarkable storyteller and and all of it. So between these two books, I loved them both. Um, Jade City so far is going really, really well. So I would say very successful last three days of reading and I'm jazzed. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this reading vlog and I'll see you soon with another one soon. Goodbye.